Hi there, it's Patrick Donahoe. Thanks again for being such a valued client of Paradigm Life. We're excited to release a special episode today from our Perpetual Wealth Strategy podcast, and it's actually the first episode of our 2020 summer season. The co-hosts are going to be two wealth strategists at Paradigm Life, Will Street and Nate Butler. They'll be your guides to a unique strategy that we use with clients called the volatility buffer. This episode will lay out how establishing the asset of cash value in a whole life policy, which is uncorrelated to other assets that you might have, can help navigate volatile markets and circumstances such as the one that we're currently in. This episode couldn't come at a better time. Will and Nate have been on my team for a number of years, and I consider them dear friends. Will joined Paradigm Life after six years of practicing law with a focus on consumer finance litigation, bankruptcy, and estate planning. Nate has worked in the financial services industry since 2008 and is an expert on all types of insurance and investment strategies. Both Nate and Will sit on the Paradigm Life advisory board and to me are invaluable assets to both the company as well as the clients they serve. So let's go ahead and turn it over to them. Welcome to the Perpetual Wealth Strategy Podcast. Hey, thanks Patrick for uh, for the introduction. Uh, I'm I'm Will Street uh, here with my good buddy, Nate Butler. Uh, We're excited to uh, be with you on this episode uh, and to talk about something that really is super, super timely. Uh, And before we jump into the actual topic itself, uh, maybe Nate, let's just take a minute and uh, and maybe just give a little bit of background information about uh, about us. Um, I- I've been here at Paradigm for man, a little over six years now, which is hard to believe. Um, I have clients in almost every state in the United States. I think I'm uh, up to 46, 47 states, something like that, which is uh, which is super cool when I think about it. Yeah. Um, several hundred clients uh, and and. The thing that I love is, man, my clients really run the spectrum. You know, I've got uh, clients who are just starting out professionally. I've got children of clients. um, And then I've got clients on the opposite end of the spectrum who are, you know, well into their retirement years and everyone in between. And uh, uh, I'm just, man, I think of uh, anything that is more enjoyable to do than what we get to. Um, How about you, Nate? How, How many years have you been at this? You've been at it longer than I have, actually. Yeah, so I, I've been here with Paradigm, uh, I think about seven to eight years. Uh, but I, before that, I started out in the uh, financial services industry. It's been, I've been involved at least to some degree in the financial services industry for about 13, 13 plus years. Um, so it's, you know, pre 2008, I went through the 2008 debacle uh, with securities licensed and, and just kind of saw what happened there. But you know, you and you and I have, have spoken over the years, Will. I know that we're kind of on the same page when it comes to you know what we do and and you know how we enjoy what we do. And I was thinking the other day, like, why do I enjoy what I do the most? You know, what about it that do I enjoy the most? And it's absolutely like you said, it's connecting with clients, being able to connect. You know, like uh, like we are just over over a conference call. And do that across the country with clients, and and it kind of runs runs the spectrum of uh, you know the different uh, you know businesses that they that they own and run, and the different jobs that they have, and lifestyles and so forth. So that part of that part of my my of what we do is is so fun. I I, I really enjoy that. <clears throat> so yeah, it's uh, I really appreciate uh, being on with you. Of course, we've we've spent a lot of time talking and and oh, collaborating, yeah. and you know working for the for the the betterment of, of our clients and so forth. I think this, like you said, I think this is a great topic to talk about. It's super timely. Yeah, me, me too. So maybe just kind of leading into the topic itself, um, you know, there's, there's a few uh, major challenges that, uh, you know, as we interact with our clients who are maybe are, are a little bit more mindful of retirement, right? As it's getting closer yeah. Uh, you know, maybe, you know, sometimes this applies to even those who are in retirement, but for the most part, it's those who are kind of looking uh, out with an eye towards retirement. Um, and maybe just to pose a question to you, what would you say in your experience, what's the biggest fear that a client has about retirement? It's, it's far and away, 
the fear of running out of money, not having enough or, you know, that they run out of that income stream, the asset that it was coming from before they get to their life expectancy. Totally. Yeah. I was going to say, absolutely agree. Same, same, uh, same response. Um, and, and why, why do you suppose that is? In other words, for the average person, what are they counting on for their retirement and maybe what risks are, uh, are inherent in, in, uh, in the type of retirement strategy that most people have? Yeah, so I think like, I've, I've thought a lot about this and I think it's important to ask, you know, why, why is that the biggest fear? You know, what, what is it that causes that fear? And as you start to analyze, you know, the whys behind it, you can start to come up with different solutions. So what I have found as I've kind of studied this and helped implement different strategies for clients is, uh, usually clients have, in, in the current kind of day and age that we live in, the touted, the, the most popular retirement account for the last several decades, at least, has been the 401k or the IRA. And those dollars that have been saved into those accounts are typically invested in the market. Now, when we talk about the market, we're, re we're usually referring to the stock market, right? <clears throat> And, and it's important to understand what that means. When you have money in a 401k that's invested in a mutual fund that is then invested in the market, what does that really mean? And ultimately, you're invested in companies across the country and maybe even across the world, right? right. And so there's, there's economic uh, and just different variables that we absolutely have no control over when we invest in those types of accounts, right? right? Something can happen in China overnight that can affect uh, one of the funds or multiple funds within your 401k. And you don't know about it until you wake up the next day and all of a sudden your, your account values are down, right? Surprise. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So that, you know, we call that the market downturns or the market volatility, which has a major impact on the longevity of, of an asset class or, or an asset when it, especially when it comes to producing a retirement income or a stream of cash flow in retirement. <clears throat> yeah, excellent point. Because you know, if if somebody's got a four hundred one k, let's say, right through their employer, and uh, and I found this to be true. You know, when I was practicing law, and I had a four hundred one k, and of course I you know checked my account balance and and that sort of thing. Well, if you're if you're in your late twenties or your early thirties or something like that, and and the idea of retirement isn't even on your radar yet. Yeah. Well, the fact that the market ebbs and flows, right, that there's volatility that exists in the market, right, where it periodically corrects, sometimes it periodically corrects really painfully. Well, right. if you're not counting on that income in the short term, you just kind of, you know, dismiss it and you say, well, it'll probably recover at some point. And what, uh, what I find just in my interaction with clients is, man, the closer you get to retirement, Right, the 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 shorter that runway is becoming, yeah. the more concerned you get about that market volatility. Because if it continues to experience that volatility when you're retired and you're trying to systematically pull a predictable, uh, you know, level of income from that account, but the market doesn't behave predictably or in a linear way where there's a steady, predictable return, then it's a moving target. And it's a, it's a big challenge to try and pull a fixed amount of income out of an account, the value of which is always fluctuating. Exactly. And I think like, you know, you, you kind of posed a question earlier, you know, what are, what are clients trying to accomplish? What's the main goal when it comes to retire, you know, creating retirement income? And it's to really create a, a steady cash flow and income coming in that you can then use to cover all your living expenses. Right. Well, if, if the asset that that, that that income is being pulled out of is on a nonlinear line, right? A line that goes up and down and all over the place. How well is that going to bode for creating this longevity of cash flow or income to last at least as long as you do, right? Right. And I think that's that's the main the main concern and issue. And I and just you know human nature is to say, well, that's an unknown. I don't know what's actually going to happen with that account. So what I think naturally happens, what I found with clients is they just simply spend less than they, and sometimes than they really need to or should or could by not having the right strategies in place. Right. 
Um, and, and we, one term obviously that you and I are familiar with that, that uh, we, we probably should talk about is, um, you know, the, the fact that the market is not linear, that it doesn't behave in a predictable way, right? We're always looking in the rearview mirror to see what the market did last year, right? Uh, we don't know ahead of time what the market is going to do, right? If we knew what market returns were going to look like, you know, every year for the rest of our life, and if we knew, you know, if we're, if we're while we're asking for things, we may as well ask for this too, which is, how long am I going to live, right? If we knew market returns ahead of time, Easy. And we knew exactly how long we were going to live, you could plan for retirement with absolute certainty and it would be super easy, right? You could, that's math, right? But there's what's known as sequence of returns risk. And that is a volatile market is not predictable. In other words, we know that it'll be volatile and we know that there will be down years in the market. We just don't know when they'll, they're going to happen. And the challenge for people is, when they get into retirement and you're having to draw income from this pool of capital that's exposed to that market volatility, if it's a down year and you spend while it's down, that's like being kicked while you're down, right? I mean, that's just compounds the negative and it makes it that much more difficult for the market or for the, uh, the account itself to recover. You've yeah. depleted it further uh, and made it that much more difficult for it to recover if and when the market turns around and, and recovers. Yeah, and one, one of the analogies that I, that I heard several years ago that I really like is, think of your retirement account as your, you've got little workers in that, in that retirement account, right? right. Let's say you've got, you've got a half a million dollars or a million dollars just for an easy number to do math on. You've got a million dollars in this retirement account. You've got a million workers in there and you don't have the luxury of, the, of deciding if you're gonna, if that's your sole, let's say that's your sole account that's, that's, uh, that's correlated to the markets, that's your sole retirement account, you don't have the luxury of deciding if you're going to pull income from that account or not, right? You have to pull income every year you to meet it. expenses. Yep. So like you were saying, if you pull, let's say you pull, I don't know, let's say you pull 60 grand and then the market loses 10 or 20% or 30%, you know, the coronavirus happens or something like that, and it loses 30%, you lose another 30% of your workers, like you said, they can't recover because the mark you took you took uh, workers off the job and then the market pulled those workers as well and you're not getting them back. I, so. I like that analogy where your your capacity to produce right if you think about it like a factory and you've now eliminated a portion of your workforce, yep. the ability of that of that production crew their ability to produce is decreased because you you fired them. Good, yeah, super good analogy. So. I think that kind of leads maybe to the next point, which is, you know, what's, what is the financial services industry's maybe best answer to kind of deal with this concern of, you know, the average retiree who says, okay, now, now that I'm getting into retirement and I've got a, you know, million dollars in my 401k that I've built up, that's great, right? Well, how do I know how much of that I can spend and, and have some level of, of assurance that I'm not going to run out of it, right? And right. that's where this, uh, it, what's over the past maybe 20 years or so has been kind of the rule of thumb, and that is the 4% rule, right? Yeah. Which says that if you've got a million dollars in your 401k, to have a decent chance, and by decent, it's, I think the, the statistically, it's like 80% now, um, to have about an 80% chance of being able to live 30 years with that million dollars you could spend about 40 grand a year. And, and just to be clear on here, mm -hmm. on this point, it's spending that 40 grand every year so that you have the probability of, of having at just $1 left over at life expectancy. Not that you're going to have the million dollars still, it's you're going to have $1 left over <laughs> because of that market volatility. Right. Yeah. So, and for most people, as I've had that conversation with, uh, with people, A, it's, Man, I thought I could. I thought my million dollars would give me better than you know forty grand a year. That's kind of the first big uh, kind of shocker that that uh, that people experience. And then it's exactly what you just said, which is, wait a minute. I I thought I could live comfortably and have a pretty good chance of being able to leave something behind to right. a surviving spouse or you know to to my family, you know, some sort of estate uh, play. But the reality is, and that's not what the 4% rule takes into account. And it's because 
unexpected, you know, uncertainty of life expectancy and yeah. sequence of returns in the market to try to solve for those two big uncertainties, you end up having to be super, super uh, cautious, which is the 4% rule, which is even, and this is probably a point you're, you were going to mention too, and that is the 4% rule is kind of being discredited, right? At least it has over the past few years as we're in a really low interest rate environment. Most retirement income experts are saying 4% is too aggressive. It's got to be scaled down to something like 3% or I've even, I've even heard high twos, right? Well, and, and you think about why, why that is the case. Why was it a 4% distribution rate? And that's what we're talking about is not a rate of return. Right. But a distribution rate, the percentage of, of income you can pull based on the initial balance. So why is that distribution rate? Why was it four percent? And now it's now they're saying no, that's actually a little too high. And I think it's because things. I don't think I know that the markets have become more and more volatile. Meaning the swings, the low end swings have been more dramatic. Like you think about the two thousand eight, you know, the crisis of two thousand eight. The, the dot com bust before that, and now, you know, this coronavirus thing, and man, that has such a major impact that has caused the financial services industry to, to rethink that, you know, the four percent rule and land somewhere around what is it two, two yeah. and a half, I two, yeah, something two. like that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, so you think about how problematic that is, right? The how much income that creates based on a million dollar account. That may not be enough income. Yeah, and, and imagine you're the retiree. You retire like a few years into the oh, great four percent rule, perfect, yeah. you know. And you're counting on that four percent distribution, and now you're reading information that says, "Hey, actually, over the last you know ten to fifteen years of your life, you're going to need to take a haircut, right? You're going to need to scale down the you know the the distribution that you're taking because circumstances have changed, right? <clears throat> life today." isn't the same as it was, you know, 20 years ago in terms of volatility, right? The, 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 up, the swings up and down by the market, the market's gotten significantly more volatile uh, over that period of time. And I think I've also read uh, data that shows it's, it's kind of peak to valley. That volatility is much more aggressive than it, yeah. uh, than it ever has been before. And the timing of the corrections is kind of being squished, you know, where you see this massive increase, but then you see a, uh, a very dramatic decrease. And it's just really, really tough to plan reliably for retirement income when you're kind of navigating those waters. So I think that kind of brings, uh, kind of brings us to the next point, which is, you know, obviously you and I have interaction with clients uh, who are in that position, right? That, uh, uh, but for our implementation of certain strategies and using certain tools that those are the waters that they'd be forced to navigate so maybe Nate if you wouldn't mind just kind of talk through a, a little bit what what sort of strategy do we uh, do we help clients to implement uh, the volatility buffer yeah so that that word comes to mind you know creating a buffer creating insulation against that you know that upswing downswing a major downswing that happens that impact that happens so how do you create a buffer to do that? Um, I, I, I used a word earlier, and that is, you know, if you've got, if you've got your, your retirement assets 100% correlated to the market, meaning they are invested in the stock market, you are relegated to what, you know, that distribution rate is and what that will allow because of that, that volatility. So how do you buffer against that? And in my mind, and, and these are the strategies that we've implemented for you know, a lot of our clients across the country is to get some of those, a, a good percentage of those assets uncorrelated to the market. In other words, when the market goes down, it doesn't matter because those assets or that percentage of your account balances or your, your portfolio are completely uncorrelated to the market. Now, what does that, what does that do for you? What's the strategy if you've got you know, a, a piece of your portfolio that maybe is correlated to the market and it's, you know, participating in the volatility. And then you've got this other piece that is uncorrelated to the market. You, you know, you're going to need to take a certain amount of income every year. Now, what's the strategy? What have you implemented for clients, uh, Will, with regards to this, with this buffering, this volatility buffer where you have those two uncorrelated accounts? Yeah, got, got it. So obviously the core of what we do, uh, 
in, in a lot of the strategies that we incorporate. And this one uh, especially is, like you said, we're looking for an asset, we're looking for a tool that will give us the ability to accumulate a pool of capital that will be buffered against the volatility of the market, right? So if we've got a 401k or something that is exposed to it, we need to balance that with something that is not exposed to it. So the ideal vehicle to use for that purpose is a high cash value life insurance policy, right? We refer to that pretty frequently as a wealth maximization account. Yep. At the end of the day, that's a life insurance policy that is very specifically designed to accumulate cash value in an aggressive way. Um, and as, again, most of our clients will know, uh, the, the whole purpose behind that is we want the safe, steady, predictable return that the life insurance policy allows us to generate, right? Where we're plugging into as a participating member, participating policy, we're plugging into the profitability of the insurance company. We're not blown about by, you know, the volatility that exists in the stock market. And so the, the idea, and as we've built this out uh, with clients and the data is absolutely there to support this uh, and has been now for the past several years, there's some really compelling information out there now that says, if you, if you take this approach, you've got your, your market correlated pool of capital, like you said, and we, you know, we take the time to build up our non-market correlated pool of capital, right? Which is the cash value in our uh, policy. When the market is up, right? And we can look back over the previous year and we can see that it was an up year in the market that previous year, take the income distribution from your market correlated account, right? right. You st it's not like you can push pause on your need for the income. You've got to have the income, right? Exactly. Right. Um, so when the market is up, you pull from that market correlated account. When the market is down, when we're experiencing a correction or it's, a, it's just a down year in the market, um, then to allow that market correlated account the opportunity to recover and not spend it or take a distribution while it's down, that's when we pull our income from the non-market correlated account. So we, maybe we take a distribution from our, uh, our policy or we take a policy loan from our policy, depending on how we want to structure that. So market correlated account and the market's up take the distribution, take the income from our cash value and our policy when the market's down. And when you can build in that sort of buffer and you're allowing the market correlated asset the opportunity to recover, that makes a massive difference in uh, you know, not, oh, go ahead. And, and it, well, it kind of goes back from a visual standpoint, you think about, you know, the, the market or the, uh, the factory and our, and our retirement workers. Yeah. It preserves the size of your factory and the amount of workers that you have in there to allow them to continue to produce that income going forward versus just shutting it down and shutting it down by taking, you know, great taking your income. Totally. Yeah. Great, great point. <clears throat> yeah. And, and, you know, kind of speaking to the result, uh, if you can build in that sort of buffer um, and, and uh, cause obviously every, if you do nothing, this is a conversation that I have with clients all the time. And I think you mentioned it a minute ago, if you do nothing you, by default, you're stuck with the 4% rule or the 3% rule, whatever we're right. going to call it now, right? By doing nothing, you're stuck with that. That's the only other option because you don't know how long you're going to live and you don't know the timing of the mar of market returns. Because of those uncertainties, you're stuck with what you're stuck with. Yep. So if you wanna step outside of and away from those types of limitations, and if you wanna either A, be able to draw more income from the pool of assets that you've built up, and B, draw that income over a longer period of time more reliably, you have to in some way buffer against that market volatility. So more income and taken more reliably over a longer period of time. That's what we're after. And that's what, that's what you get. Exactly. So here, here's a couple of thoughts that, that come to my mind that may be the same thoughts of those that are listening to this, to this, uh, this recording. So first of all, if you're an existing client, you might wonder, is this a different policy? Is it a different type of thing than, than maybe the banking policies that we have set up and the whole life policies? And the answer is no, absolutely not. It's, in fact, what you already have in place as your banking policy, where maybe you're taking loans to make purchases, invest in real estate, invest in your business, whatever, you know, those pre-retirement years, 
And as you're paying back those loans, it can then become that market, that, that, uh, that volatility buffer, that uncorrelated bucket of funds that we're talking about. What I would say, what I would recommend is that there's kind of a mathematical equation that needs to happen here to understand what, what the right size of volatility buffer is that you need. Or in other words, how much cash value do, do you need to have inside of your, your life insurance policy to make sure it'll buffer for enough years so that you, you can uh, create a, a greater retirement income. And that's where I'd say, you know, reach out to your, to your advisor because they can go through that, that exercise to figure that out. And maybe what you have is enough. Maybe it's not quite enough. And maybe there's some, you know, additional strategy to be had there. If you're somebody who doesn't have a policy, then like, like Will mentioned earlier, these are high cash value policies. They're specifically whole life insurance policies structured in a very specific way. And you might be thinking, you know, if you don't understand completely, you know, the products that we, that we set up for clients, you might be thinking, you know, that's going to take too long. You know, am I out of time and so forth? Well, the way that we structure these, we can get these to a, to a great point or a great spot within as short as about five years, right? Five, six years, maybe to yep. where they can be a great volatility buffer. Absolutely. Yep. I, I think that's a, that's a great point to, to maybe conclude on is, uh, uh, is that one. So if you're an existing client and you have questions, uh, man, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're here to help uh, anytime. If, uh, if you're not a current client of ours and you're curious as to how this might, might fit or might apply to you, again, please, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, we'd love to speak with you uh, about that as well. So Nate, man, it's, it's been great to, to be with you on this episode. Appreciate uh, the chance to talk about it and appreciate all uh, of you who are listening. Thanks for hanging with us today and uh, we'll catch you soon. Yeah, thanks, Will. We'll talk later. Hey, thanks for joining us today. and. Thank you again for choosing Paradigm Life as a part of your financial team. Be sure to check out the Perpetual Wealth Strategy podcast page on our website, paradigmlife.net, for all of this episode's content, as well as additional assets that you can use throughout your financial journey. There's a lot of great information on there that you can download, reference, and share as you explore the different ways that the Perpetual Wealth Strategy can work for you. The remaining four episodes for this summer series are going to drop in late June. Each of these episodes will focus on a specific tier of the hierarchy of wealth and other concepts for building an unshakable financial foundation. All four of these episodes will go live on the exact same day, so you can binge watch or listen back to back, or you can space them out to fit your schedule. So make sure you check back in with us next month because these episodes are ones that you do not want to miss. Until next time. Thank you for listening to the Perpetual Wealth Strategy Podcast. Be sure to visit the show's official page at paradigmlife.net for appropriate disclaimers and terms of service. Guest opinions are their own. If you require specific investing, financial, legal, tax, or any other specialized advice, please consult an appropriate professional or a wealth strategist at Paradigm Life. We welcome and appreciate reviews of the show. Head on over to iTunes or Stitcher to leave your review today. And don't forget to subscribe to the show to get access to every new episode and its exclusive content. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.